Hi guys, my name is Allie. Um, if you're not familiar with my channel, I am a hospice nurse. I've been doing hospice now for almost five years. It's been so long. I can't believe it. I'm old. Anywho, so I'm here to do a video on skills, hospice skills. What to expect if you're a hospice nurse. What does my kind of day look like as far as a normal day goes? I do have another video of a day in the life of a hospice nurse, kind of how I get set up and kind of start my day. But we're going to go over some of the skills you're going to need to know. Um, so uh, along with hospice, people don't realize that we do so many things. We have so many skills. Um, you know, you are a jack of all trades when you're a hospice, jack of all trades when you're a hospice nurse. You know, it also depends on the agency you sign up with. Some agencies admit really, I would say, skilled patients and others don't. Like my first agency, we didn't have patients who had CAD pumps or Plurex drains. But at my current hospice, not only do we do that kind of stuff, but we do CAD pumps. We do, like I said, the Plurex drains. Um, things like that. So let's say you're going to your first visit with Mrs. Smith on Monday and you're going to walk in and let's say she's a home patient. You're going to assess her um, level of consciousness, her orientation. Just do your basic head to toe like you would in, in um, a facility. And that's a super skill that you need as a hospice nurse because you're working alone let's say you need to change orders or something like that, you're going to need to be the eyes, ears, whatever, senses for the physician you're trying to get orders from. So a good head to toe assessment skill set is necessary. Now, what you're going to want to do is, if you're familiar with the patient, patient, then you're going to want to know their baseline. But let's say it's a Monday, right? Look back into their chart and see, did they get seen over the weekend? What were they seen for? Um, your case manager, or if you're the case manager, you're most likely going to be notified that they were seen for X, Y, and Z over the weekend. So make sure you follow up on that on their first visit. Say she has a skin tear to her right shin, right? Okay, so you're going to be document. you're going to check that plan of care. Let's say you're the LPN. Check that plan of care. Check those wound care orders. Make sure that they're consistent with what that wound needs at this time. Okay, because as an LPN or an RN, you're going to be constantly changing wound care orders and updating that care plan um, as an RN. As an LPN, you don't update the care plan. Don't bother with it. Tell the RN, you got to update it. That's their job. Um, it's outside of your scope of practice. And lucky you because care plans stink. So, usually on the first visit of the week, we're hairs. I haven't dyed my hair months. Usually on the first visit of the week, um, you're going to measure the wound, okay? Now, usually the case managers like to kind of do that stuff, but as an LPN, you're going to be thrown into situations and take over because the RN got pulled somewhere or the RN needed to go do an admission, which is another thing that sucks about being a registered nurse. Admissions in hospice can take hours, okay? <laughs> so you're going to be um, measuring. Usually, the, they'll be in order for measure wound on the first uh first visit of the week. I think that is a Medicare standard. So if you, I would double check with your agency in your area, but see, you may have to have that in your order if you start, or I should say, if you initiate wound care, you may have to have that on the order that you are going to be measuring the wound um, at every visit. And that is just, um, I think it's a Medicare thing because they want to make sure that you're not misusing supplies and blah 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 like if the wound's getting better and it's like healed in a scab <laughs> why are we still documenting that we're putting like uh calcium algae on it if it's not draining right they want to make sure that we're not wasting wasting stuff also at every single visit you're going to be assessing pain even if your patient doesn't have a history of pain it has no pain medication on their med list um, you're still going to be assessing if there's pain because pain can come at any time, okay? And if it does, then you're going to have to, you know, by asking these questions, you almost open up a can of worms sometimes because <laughs> you're going to have to say, you're going to have to, if Mrs. Smith says, you know what, I've been having pain to my right hip, um, you know, well, let's do our nursing assessment and when do you have the pain? How long does it last? 
and do the stinking numerical scale. Um, if, if the patient is alert and oriented enough to understand that. Um, and you have to do an intervention. So if my patient is having pain, I am most likely going to call the primary care on that one, not the hospice um, physician, because that's more of a primary care thing. We always involve the primary care as much as they want to be. Sometimes patients don't have a primary care, so our hospice physician kind of defaults for a little bit, or the whole journey, depends. Um, but yeah, so do that, and let's say Mrs. Smith has a Foley. I'm gonna assess, the, if, if the Foley's draining, um, you should know if the Foley needs, as a case manager, or the LPN, or as a case manager, you should know when the Foley needs to be changed again. Okay, you should be documenting fully needs to be changed once a month or flushed weekly or flushed however according to your you know patient's needs that should be in the plan of care for your lpn or any other nurse to look at so that they are aware okay it's very important for rns to keep those care plans updated i know it's super hard um because it depends on your caseload and it's just things get crazy it really they get crazy and it's not fair that they don't have the time um, but as an LPN also, if you feel uncomfortable with what is going on in the care plan or the orders, you can always double check with either the RN or the physician who ordered them and say, is this what you still want to do? It doesn't, if it doesn't seem to jive because you are a nurse as an LPN. Don't forget that. Okay. So you have nursing assessment skills. So if you think that a wound no longer needs wound care, then call the physician Give them your assessment, and then if they agree, DC the order. Make sure to let your RN know to DC that order from the care plan. Um, that way, nobody's wasting their time kind of filling out the documentation of the wound being healed and blah, 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 blah. Um, another skill you're going to have to have is, you know, one thing we were very nailed, hammered in. One thing that was hammered into our brains during nursing school is bowels, right? Bowels are super duper important, too. Um, so we want to make sure those bowels are in check. Um, people are pooping if it's a regular as there's as staff nurses who are going to see these patients on a regular basis. You should hopefully know their bowel habits. You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, the aides sure will. <laughs> so check in with your aides. Usually they'll, they'll pop in and say, um, like the hospice aides, so oh, patient hasn't pooped in like two days. Um, cause I got eyes on our patients sometimes five days a week. Other skills you're gonna want to, um, be in tune with besides your, um, head to toe assessment skills and wound assessing skills. Um, on a side note with the wound assessing skills, if you feel like you need to carry around like a little kind of reference as to this wound healing stages, um, and things like that, go for it. A lot of people do. We even have like a reference in my, in the charting system that we use that, you know, kind of gives the definition of different wound healing and things you're looking at. So you're not off course because you just want to make sure that you're uh, kind of, you want to make sure that you're documenting the right thing. And if it doesn't seem like there is another thing, there's always an other box. Free text, it's the best because you know what, you don't want to check a box that you're like, eh, it's kind of sort of this. So something that you're going to also be doing on a weekly basis is like updating med lists or doing med reconciliation or the pharmacy should actually be doing med recs. Um, but if you, you know, you're going to be reviewing medication with the family to make sure this is still in line with the patient's care plan that they want to be going on. Um, is a patient on any new vitamins, things like that. Cause we want to know those things. Cause if we're prescribing stuff or the doctor's prescribing stuff, we want to know what the interactions might be. But speaking of medications, it's good to get familiar with the end of life or the comfort kit, e kit, whatever you call it, get familiar with the medications, the names, um, the frequency, you know, how often at what dose, um, the onset of them and what they're for a majority of um, a nurse's life, especially a hospice nurse, is, like I said, education. Okay, so you're going to be educating those families on what these meds are for, when to give them, um, and when to contact us if it doesn't seem like it's working. So you want to get a general knowledge of what these medications are for. Yeah, sometimes as a nurse, you're going to be get, um, you're going to be, 
As a hospice nurse, you'll also get called out for things like falls. Like if the patient has a fall, even with or without injury, depending um, whether it's at home, an ALF, or a skilled nursing facility, you'll most likely get called out to, you most likely get called out to assess the patient. Okay, and to call the doctor to let them know they had a fall, if it hasn't already been done, if it has been done by the, um, the facility nurse, then just document that. Um, as a hospice nurse, I always do like to call the family myself um, and give them my report and they expect that from us as well. I know it might, that's just at my agencies, okay? Um, because the family will get notified that we were called out to assess. So, like I said, that is kind of the day. If I'm gonna go see Mrs. Smith, for the first day of the week, I'm gonna be doing my head to toe assessment, um, you know, checking on her questions or concerns that she has, anything new, or if the case manager wants me to check on something specific, then I will do that or call the primary care about something specific. I'll reorder medications um, for her if she needs them. Always check to see if any medications need to be reordered and always do your skin checks um, at least weekly. If they're having an aid, then they're probably getting a skin check like every single day, depending on how many times the aid is going there. Um, you're going to be assessing for end of life. You're going to be assessing for the um, the decline in your patient appetite, decreasing things like that. Um, but your skills are going to be that of home health. Along the lines is home health. And people think a lot of times when it comes to hospice, it's like, oh, you're just there to hold their hand or give them medication so they're comfortable. Nope, nope. It's just about treating the patient instead of just the disease. Being like home health hospice, that's what your day is gonna look like. If you're in a going into a facility to assess a patient, you're still gonna be doing your head to toe. You still might be having to do wound care once a week so you can get those measurements in. The thing about going into a facility is they might have already done the measurements before you got there or they might have already changed the wound before you got there and it's the first day of the week. Do it at your next visit, say, I'm gonna come, what time do you guys change the dressing? I'm gonna come at this time. Or just leave it until I get there, or I don't know. Something like that, figure it out so that you get your own measurements in. You can see, um, and you can as a hospice nurse as well as make recommendations for wound care or consult with their wound care nurse or their wound care specialist. Because a lot of skilled nursing facilities have all those things, that's why they're skilled but you're still gonna be doing your head to toe assessment, reporting off to the patient's nurse. Check that facility binder for new orders, new labs, new anything, new notes, because sometimes things happen in those facilities and you know, human error happens, it gets missed a report. So if a patient gets prescribed a new med, prescribed a new med for like a UTI, it happens, right? Um, update our care plan or yeah, update the care plan, update the med list for us. Um, and if you're unsure if a medication is covered by us, because that's one thing when you're updating med list in hospice, always make sure you click or not click that hospice covered box or whatever it is that you have. Um, your hospice pharmacist or your clinical manager or probably the clinical manager, I'm not sure, the quality manager, whoever handles that. It's different depending on the size of the hospice and who you have on your team. Sometimes an antibiotic might be covered by us, sometimes it might not be covered by us. It all depends on the admitting diagnosis. That's in the facility. You're going to always check the facility binder for new things, get report, um, something to always know. And it's such a pain in the butt when I go into facilities and I hate bothering people, but if they have PRM medications, I want to know how often they've been taking them over the past week. Um, like I said, you will get to know your patients and their baseline, their normals, like Miss Mary takes um, PR and Tylenol like daily. And if she's taking it daily, why don't we just have it in as daily, right? Why are we just leaving it up to her to ask for it? What a pain, unless that's what she wants, unless she wants the free ability to ask for it. But you know, at some point you have to also assess the level of like the how alert and oriented is the patient. If the patient has dementia, they're not gonna probably ask for the medication. And that's when it gets kind of hairy because you have to figure out, well, are we gonna prescribe this as the scheduled? And that's why is you have to know how often the patient's taking what because at some point they may not be 
um, capacitated enough to ask for those medications. Because let's say they have like a naproxen PRN that we prescribed at the beginning of the whole gig and they haven't taken it in like six months. Is it hurting them to, oh, you're like six months, how are they on hospice still? Yeah, some people are in hospice for like a year. They just keep requalifying. That's perfectly okay. And just as a little FYI, people on hospice live an average of 21 days past their prognosis because of the type of quality care that we provide. Let's say they haven't taken that naproxen or, you know, they took it a few times and made them sick to their stomach because they're not a big eater and they're not going to take it. Um, can we actually consult and make a host? Like, that's one thing you're going to do in a facility. I want to show you my little notes, but you are going to put hospice, take your, they might have paper you use, but usually your agency will give you your own paper with the agency name and it'll say narrative note or hospice recs or something like that. And, um, or, you know, maybe you have it, you can print it, whatever. You're going to put it on some sort of paper or you're going to write it on your iPad or laptop and print it there and stick it in the chart. You can make a hospice rec DC naproxen due to, um, patient not using it or not needing it or, um, not, has not been, um, you can even write a narrative note. You don't even need to write a position note because why well, make it easy for them. That was me, Justin, if you want, but I'm just saying maybe, maybe you could say patient um, has not taken naproxen in three months, patient has taken it in the past twice um, with complaint of GI upset, this rec to, um, recommendation is to DC naproxen. And what I write at the end of my note is these are recommendations only and require a physician's order prior to starting any medication regimen. Sign your name, date it, time it. Put your little squiggle so that nobody can write in there. Because sometimes <laughs> they'll take it as like God's word and they'll just be like, okay, we're going to do that. And most, I find most facility um, physicians are okay with our recommendations. But you always want to consult with them because they do have more knowledge of the patient. Sometimes they've been following them for a lot longer. Always, 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 at the end of every visit, make sure to say and document that you said it to the um, educated on hospice availability 24 seven and is encouraged to call with any questions or concerns. Or let's say the patient had a fall and the facility didn't report it. Always write in your documentation, educated to call hospice if patient falls again, whether or not injury is present. Facility staff nurse so-and-so verbalize understanding. I know we educate that attend to everybody to call us 24 seven, no matter what, if the patient has an injury, if the patient has a change in status, um, even if we don't have to go make a visit, we like to know so we don't play catch up at our next visit. Another skill you're going to need to do, it's a lot of documenting and I apologize because I did do a whole another video on documentation, but let's say you get a call from pharmacy midday. You know, it sucks because most of these happen while you're driving. Sometimes I'll pull over. Other times I'm literally just free writing and not even looking at it and hoping to God I can read it when I get back. But the lucky thing about technology today is you have a timestamp rate on your phone as to when they called. So a pharmacy calls you back and say, we got the prescription from Dr. Blah, blah, blah for the morphine change. Document it. So document it, update your med list, update the plan of care. Because there's no med changes made ever without a physician order, right? So you will tell the family you're going to get in contact with the physician to try and get orders. Look at my wand doo, 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 doo. to try and get orders. Then yes. Once you get those orders, update them. And if they say, you know what, I'm not really comfortable drawing up um, the morphine. Uh, well, well, the morphine should already be in the house. Maybe or maybe not there was education done on drawing up the morphine. But you can always send somebody out in the evenings to go do some education on how to pre-fill, how to fill syringes. Or you can have them pre-fill syringes. Um, or you can have, um, if the LPN has time, she can go pre-fill syringes. Um, being in a hospice nurse is not that much different from being home health except for the end goal. Look at my veins. You're welcome, ladies.
You know an ER nurse is looking at that leg. Look at that vein. I could stick a 16 gauge in that. Anyway. <laughs> You're going to need to pretty much every skill all the way down from, like I've given bed baths as a, a hospice nurse before. I have no shame. I'm not going to, I see my patients as a lot like my family. Okay, I'm not going to leave them there if they need something. <laughs> Reefs. Um, all the way up to doing pleurex strains. And if you're not comfortable with a skill, like say you've never done a pleurex strain before, not need it. Um, so like I said, the majority of your day is, it's going to be a lot of skills all the way from like your first semester, all the way to graduating. <laughs> so you're going to be more, want to get more familiar with your end of life terminology and be more well versed in the medications that are used at end of life. So you're more, um, skilled at that but basically your day is going to consist of going to a patient's home opening up that nursing note and just going from you know it's okay to go from the top of the nursing note to the bottom that way you have flow okay and you'll develop your own sort of style skill when it comes to your assessment maybe depending on the patient what works better for them um but it's okay to go from like not you know go from vital signs to heart sounds, to lungs, to bowels, to feet, whatever. Um, <laughs> that way you don't miss anything. Um, and just check off what applies, you know, all the way from your head to the toe. And all, obviously if a patient has a complaint, always address it, always document that you addressed it. And um, any interventions that you did from the big to the small, if you just did, went in, assessed, head to toe assessment, patients at end of life, but you did not care. Document it. Document all of the little wonderful things that you do. Um, Cause that's kind of what we're all about is doing those little wonderful things. But always just to make sure as an RN, try updating your care plans as much as you can for everybody else. So everybody is on the same page, um, you know, and work together as that interdisciplinary team that is hospice, okay? And that's what's so wonderful is you have all of these wonderful team members to bounce things off of. So if you're unsure about how to go about starting your day and it seems a little overwhelming, then, you know, I said, I hopefully you're going to be shadowing some sort of nurse <laughs> before you start your day or before you just, you know, get kicked out of the nest. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah. It's a lot different than being in a facility. It's a lot different than nursing school. When you had all these people around you who you could say, what does this look like to you? Can you come check this out? When you're a facility, sure, you can grab that nurse and say, what does it look like to you? Will they always have time? Yeah, I don't know, they're kind of busy all the time. Like all the time having 30 patients to like one RN or one LPN and like two A's. But never be afraid to speak up and ask questions because you don't want to go in looking like all oh, this confident nurse and sometimes not knowing what to say. Sometimes patients ask me questions or their families and I say, you know, I, gee, I don't really know, but I'll find out for you. And you know, I don't think it makes me look like less of a confident nurse. It makes it that they can trust me that I'm not going to tell them something just to fill the air with words. Um, I'm not trying to look like a know-it-all, um, to anybody. So if you want to, if you need to figure out how to, you know, kind of go about your day, just always start with that basic head to toe assessment. Always look at the, that's how I learned a lot was looking at the last nurse's notes <laughs> and seeing what they wrote and how they set up their narrative. Um, you know, don't copy it word for word, but it's okay to look at how they set up your narrative, um, their narrative notes and kind of what they put in there and you know, what the patient looked like the last time even helps important as an interdisciplinary team. Um, as an LPN, always don't be afraid to ask your RN things. That's why we have phones <laughs> um, to communicate with each other. Um, but any changes, always document them. Med changes, you're going to be making a lot of. Wound care changes, you'll be making a lot of. Even ordering DME, durable medical equipment, you'll be making a lot of those changes, okay? And you'll be, you'll be good. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll get a fine ear to what is hospice. You'll get tuned in to, um, what it is and you're still going to be learning every single day. So you have to kind of consult. That's what your team is there for. Consult with them on what to do. 
okay? It doesn't matter. And as an LPN and an RN, know what's in your scope of practice, okay? So always kind of lean on people and don't try to make decisions that, you know, a doctor would. Like I tell everybody, operate within your pay grade. <laughs> they're doing the correct thing, but if they're gonna ask you, so what do you want me to do? Like sometimes, yeah, that's flattering that you think I can, but no, that's what you're there for. You have, I mean, we all have the knowledge. You wanna know the doses, but yeah, lean on your hospice physicians because they're very well skilled. If you have wound care nurses in your hospice, lean on those guys. You can consult with any of them. Don't try it, if you feel like, Meh, I don't know really what to do, because um, you're not familiar with wounds, you'll get familiar by learning through experience. And um, just one thing you can always do is document what you're seeing. And it's okay to look it up, like what granular tissue is if you're not familiar with it. Um, it's okay. If you're just starting out in hospice and if you're a new grad or um, if you worked in a less skilled area of nursing before and now you're coming to a more skilled nursing area, um, you know, just kind of what the skills you're going to have or you're going to need to kind of start. But, you know, you can just learn. Just learn every single day. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know how to do this skill so well. Or, um, you know, I would really like to shadow somebody on this skill before I perform it by myself. Okay. Um, you know, but the basic stuff that you can do is just making sure your patient's comfortable and their needs are met and that their wants and their wishes are in line with the plan of care and that everybody else understands the patient's wishes and is in line with the plan of care. <laughs> okay, have a nice day. I hope you guys are all being safe out there and um, we're all going to get through this. Okay, have a good one guys. Bye. If you're new to my channel, subscribe um, or give this video a like. Um, there's nothing else I can say. It looks like it's going to rain. I was going to go for a run. I don't really want to. <laughs> Bye, guys.